Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rohan, and uh, this is Vicky, and this is Joshua. So, today we'll uh, be discussing about this paper for uh, training biological neural networks by fine dual methods for NSR. So, uh, in the previous lecture regarding LNNs, we saw that uh, the drawbacks of the current system of LNNs. This paper tries and addresses some of the drawbacks of that paper, and it also uh, shows some, it proposes a new framework uh, for, uh, for learning new, uh, for learning uh, in the data along with logical inconsistencies. So, uh, that is what we will cover today. So, this is the overview of our presentation. Uh, we'll first do a uh, brief introduction about the uh, internet and then uh, we'll talk about the non convex constraint problem, what, what they mean. And then we'll uh, discuss about the algorithms that the authors have proposed uh, in order to optimize the training part of the And then we'll discuss about the assumptions that the author made in order to, in order for their uh, proposed algorithm to work. And finally, we'll uh, show the results and the analysis of uh, the work. A uh, quick thing, guys, if you're speaking, stand in the middle because we can't see you on the camera. So, first, a uh, brief uh, introduction of uh, this uh, to review LNN. So, the LNN has uh, two phases. Uh, the first one is the inter uh, inter uh, inference, and the second phase, the training or learning part. So, in the inference phase, we evaluate the upper and lower bounds by uh, monotonically typing the uh, function uh, until it converts. So, in, in this phase, we uh, evaluate that uh, to the thresholds for uh, inputs. And once we have that, uh, we proceed with the training part. So, uh, one uh, side note is that the upward and downward phase also passes also come into that, into the picture of the inference phase. So, uh, during the training part, we try to get the loss function. So, first, uh, the loss function, we also include the the classical uh, loss value like the uh, MST, and then we also include the number of uh, contradictions that the model has given while training. So we use that, uh, we gather the, those two losses and we try to minimize them uh, using a uh, formula like this. So the L is the supervised uh, labels that uh, the, the basic the classical loss function, uh, and the sigma is the, the loss we evaluate, uh, we get the, through the contradictions of. The contradiction that the uh, model makes. And also, we have this uh, tau the regularization parameter. Uh, it, it basically uh, you know, uh, uh, restricts the model about how many contradictions it has uh, made. Uh, basically, try to minimize that part, uh, the contradictions part, uh, using our regular tau. Right? So, I'll uh, just uh, take a simple example. Let's uh, say we have to train a neuron with the logical conjecture. So, and then uh, each neuron has parameters uh, of the weight vectors and the bias. And then there's a metaparameter alpha for the truth uh, issue. So, this is the truth table for the hand function. So, uh, if we think of order to train this function, uh, we need uh, the activation function sigma that is defined in this way. So, and also, uh, we have each of these terms as their own. Uh, so the weight must be positive and uh, the bias is positive and the alpha is uh, lies between uh, 0.5 and 1. And we can uh, include a slack variable uh, to uh, you know, totally cut off the input if we want. So given uh, this uh, activation function, we try to minimize the loss for the training. So this uh, problem of uh, minimizing the loss can be formulated uh, using the Bukashevich uh, uh, logic uh, as proposed by the authors. So, uh, using that logic, we can uh, formulate the training part of LNN using that uh, above equation of the problem one. So, we, we, we minimize the loss. Given these conditions that are subject to the condition uh, uh, new. Uh, one thing so, uh, just side note to you is that. In the rest of the paper, they will use this xi and yi as the context. So, uh, xi refers to uh, beta and weights over here, and yi refers to the alpha. So, in the rest of the paper, we will just mention xi and yi, but uh, just keep this in mind that it refers to uh, this parameter and this parameter. Yeah. So, uh, optimizing that uh, function is uh, non complex and non linear. So, we will define what to mean in a moment. Uh, so, our problem is to uh, 
I mean, the, the authors uh, try to find uh, an optimized algorithm to minimize that function using uh, the invented, uh, the discovered uh, um, new method called image that alternating the directions method of multiplies. Using that method, they try to minimize that function. Uh, so we will we'll come to that uh, through augmented the Lagrangian method. Okay. Uh, S is a hyperparameter. Yes. Okay. Uh, one more uh, thing to note is that uh, they have a constraint over here on top, and this constraint is a non convex constraint. So, we'll come back to that later, but just keep this in mind that we are trying to minimize this but with respect to this particular constraint. Okay, we'll go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so, so this to give an example of what the authors are trying to do, let's consider a small uh, a minimization problem for a constraint. Uh, non quantum constraint problem. So we want to minimize the function f of x given the function uh, g of x y is uh, less than or equal to zero. So uh, this kind of problem is called the non uh, these are non convex uh, constraint and such problem. So uh, given that uh, uh, and the problem can come up with this equation for the argument in order to optimize the uh, the f of x. Right. So, how we get this uh, is the other next part of the presentation that the office has proposed. So, I hand over this to Ricky and we'll explain that. Hello, uh, my name is Ricky, and uh, I'm going to introduce uh, some, some, uh, some concept of non convex problem and complex problem. So, next slide, please. So, non convex constraints is a uh, real. So the real thing that contains logical inconsistency due to the original element does not perform well. So uh, we human has still a lot of uh, uh, convex question, and then we are very good at it. So what is convex question? Convex question is um, related to the P problem. So it's not very hard. You can solve it in a polynomial time, and then it's very quick, and we have a lot of method to solve it, so it doesn't matter like which matter is, well, uh, it depends on the problem that you can pick. Either method can solve it very efficiently. However, in the last decades, non-convex optimization uh, became more crucial and important than before. So in fact, with the emergency of the deep learning, uh, researchers need to deal with non-convex optimization more and more and give the benefits uh, hidden behind the complexity. So this is non-convex and this is convex problem. So you can see that there's a local minima and the global minima. So this kind of problem is trying to like, for your DNN or, or a deep learning part model, you are trying to find a global minima, but uh, you actually might find a local minima. But for the convex question, you usually can like, doing some iterations, then you can find a global minima. Uh, one, uh, just to, something to make it clear. Uh, the problem in LNN is the non-convex constraint optimization. Right now, we are talking about convex and non-convex optimization. So that is not regarding the constraints. Uh, so in our normal original LNN, um, if the data, it was very sensitive to inconsistencies in the data set. So our rule set used to determine the output that we could get. If it would be a garbage output or if it would be a normal, like a valid output. Uh, now the authors say that this is because uh, because of the uh, logical inconsistencies in the data. So now they uh, talk about uh, non-convex constraint optimization as a way to tackle that problem. So we'll look at this a little more in detail uh, a little later. So uh, convex problem, right? Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, uh, like uh, it is interesting since in many cases, like a conversion sign is a polynomial. And if we can formulate a problem as a convex optimization, then we can solve it very efficiently. Okay, just next slide. So uh, a non-convex problem. What so what is a non-convex problem and convex problem? So a non-convex problem has uh, some uh, constraint that is non-convex. So where uh, it does not satisfy the condition. So, uh, I mean, it does not satisfy the constraint. So it would be called a non-convex problem. So what is a convex problem? All the parameters that you find at X and then you find, you put into the equation and it matches all the equations. 
So that's called that's called a convex problem. And convex problem usually uh, are all the function of object function and the constraint function are all convex. But non-convex problem is like some of the constraint or the functions that is not uh, that is not convex. Not convex. So um, so actually uh, even like simple looking problems with a few as 10 variables can be extremely challenging while problems with a few hundreds of variables can be intractable. So that is for non-convex problems. So here generally we face the obligation to compromise. So the compromise is that you cannot find the global minima. So you actually approximate it to find a global uh, local minima. Uh, yeah, thanks. So why is non-convex optimization needed? Uh, so uh, non-convex non optimization exists since the early days of the operation uh, operation research. Still, the topic gained more interest and focus with the emerging of the deep learning in the recent years. In fact, neural networks are universal function of approximations. With enough, enough neurons, they will have the ability to approximate approximate any functions as well. So non-convex problem usually deal with a huge amount of data because um, the more data, the model become more complex. So it become that like the problems become, have more constraint with each other, even though it's constrained, constrained uh, even if it's convex or non-convex. However, with this kind of a very complicated constraint, it forms a kind of problem to let you minimize the loss in order to, to find a better solution for your program. Okay, thanks. Oh, okay, so uh, there's a lot of way to, here you can read it by yourself, but I'll introduce a bit about the, the convergence of the way of how non-convex equations to converge. So actually there's a lot of method, but uh, th in this paper, you mentioned that you use a, lot, uh, a way called IADMM, uh, this in this way, it can help you to solve the non-convex question with a very good performance uh, compared to the old methods like the SGD or the mini batching or uh, stochastic variance reduced gradient like those. 